On today's episode of Watch Jergo, I need to stop buying cars, but there's a chance we might buy a cab over truck today. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo, and like I said, today I am in the garage picking up a quick little kit. We're gonna throw it all in the truck and it'll be our go fetch another broken car tool set. And uh, I'm gonna load the truck up real quick and we are going to head there. It's a beautiful classic truck design and it's not something you see very often, especially in a, you know the heavy duty Ford chassis. And from uh, the pictures, it's just a cab and a drivetrain. There's nothing else on the truck. So who knows if the brakes work? Who knows if the engine actually runs? I saw the gas cap is off the fuel tank in a picture. That's scary. So we'll throw a gas can in there so we can shove a hose in that if need be. And uh, we'll see. It's, it's a whole we'll see game. Who knows if any of this is gonna work. Here we go. Large Ford located. No, not this one. We're not worried about this one. Huh. We're worried about a much larger Ford. Oh, oh my. Isn't this sweet? That is sick. Man. We should just find a bed and extend it and make a whole back of it just bed. That's my plan, honestly. Heck yeah. Oh gosh, it's got split rims. Ew. John Deere Ford F600 acquired. Jake and I are rolling out because we tried everything. Well, we, what's, what's the saying? We, we tried, tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. We tried nothing and we're all out of ideas. Um, we actually kind of tried everything and we're all out of ideas. So we hooked the jump pack up to this thing, which it had no battery in it. Figured out how to make the cab over release, got it flipped up, hooked everything up hit the start button, which is an extension cord wired to a push button, which is wired directly to the starter solenoid. Hilarious, I know. And then there's another wire that you have to shove in there that runs over to the electric fuel pump. And uh, after all of that, we got the fuel pump to run and the engine would not crank over. So we hooked the jump pack directly to the starter and then turned the jump pack on and the starter didn't budge. And luckily we had a hammer, our assault um, to go tool kit there for the side-by-sides in the back. Gave it a couple taps with the hammer not even a flinch, which is unfortunate because the starter has just been replaced. And then we decided we had to give up and we're gonna have to get a trailer and drag this thing home. They're selling that house and they need the truck out of there immediately. So the whole reason that they were selling the truck is to get everything cleared out of there. There's a ton of cars hiding in the back, a Porsche 944 manual, a Power Stroke Econoline E450. What was the other one? Uh, uh, there's that V6 Mustang. Mustang. Yeah and uh beside that like a, an old bel air there was nothing left yeah oh was man a bel air yeah it was rear quarters it was once a bel air uh and it had actually been filled with trash the 944 had two but we did buy the cab over for one thousand dollars which i think is a pretty good deal if it actually runs after uh hopefully it turns over we could bump start it we could hook a chain to it put it in <laughs> gear and give it the old it'll take off but I think it would be a lot smarter uh, to just kind of go get the old gooseneck trailer. And Are we really here to do things the smart way? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's has a that, safe way. Has that ever been our MO? <laughs> and the other thing is, it said runs and drives in the ad, and it definitely doesn't do either of those things because they said it hadn't ran in uh, like four to six months. So it, it did run at one time, but what I do know is it felt like there were no brakes so we probably shouldn't drive it home. That brake system was very confusing the to me. The brakes are wild on that thing. It might look late, but it's only 7 p.m. and Jake and I are back to pick up the F600. So we've got a chain on this thing and we're gonna have to pull it out of this driveway and then all the way out onto the road until it's straight. And hopefully then we can use the old winch on this trailer to get it out of here because this thing is not starting no matter what we try. Look at that, we even have some light. Shout out to the city for providing a little bit of light in the middle of the night. How's it drive, Jake? Heavy. I thought it might be. Also, look at this wheel. It is like cambered all the way out there on the bottom. Oh, that's, that explains some of the weird noises. That's unfortunate. We weren't expecting that. All right, well, you got the thing straight. Shout out to Jake. Uh, now we're gonna unhook our chain back up. We're gonna try to put the trailer all the way under the front wheels and then just Pull it right on. We would not be moving this truck without this trailer, that's for sure. No wow. chance. Oh, this thing's insane. And it rolls back too, so it'll push right under the front wheels. Jake is moving. Tyler showed up. 
brought us the Harbor Freight Magnet Light. <laughs> it's working perfectly. And this thing's just pulling it right up on. Uh oh. The winch. Jinx it! The winch remote battery just shut off. No! Look at that giant piece of artwork. I love these Art Deco trucks with the wraparound glass. Jake slapped the strap, so it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So just we gotta we gotta discuss this. It's important. Uh, the winch is still hooked up, and it's chained around the front axle. Both of these straps are around the front axle, back to the heaviest points on this thing, and there is a chain on the rear on a boomer. So while DOT probably would be very upset about this, it's also pretty safe. Pretty safe. As long as the front axle doesn't go anywhere. It's not, it, that's <laughs> not going in. That's not going, that chain has the tone. <laughs> Sounds like a Ferrari climbing belt. <laughs> you gotta have the, uh, the hey, yeah. your, your chain's a little flat. <laughs> it's not playing the right note. It needs a tune up. All right, well, the, uh, the Harbor Freight light was uh, clutch. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. And we are loaded up, ready to drag this thing home. This is going to be horrifying. Can't wait. We're, I, we're taking surface streets, I think. Yeah, yeah, this is not <laughs> going on the highway. I'm also worried about our height. What is it? Yes, yes. So, well, I am five foot five. Let me stand on your head. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll know exactly. I'll Just finish my back off completely. I'm, I'm thinking it's 10 foot. I think we're okay. If that's 10 foot, we're all good. Yeah. Mm, probably but, 12. Well... It's 10 foot. We're good. We did it. We got the thing home safely. The iPhone, first we didn't have a tape measure, and this is probably one of the tallest things I've ever pulled in my life. Uh, we estimated based on Jake's height and also the iPhone measuring tool that it was about 10 foot four. Who knows if that's true? It looks like it's probably closer to 12, but none of the bridges we went under were anywhere lower than 15, so we were good. And uh, we just pulled this thing home real slow, just in case. I'm super excited about the story behind this. We don't know it all, obviously, but it is in a full John Deere livery and it's reflective. It's got John Deere mud flaps. Uh, it says John Deere on the front. And there's a John Deere hat in the cab that seems like it just got left behind. And what's it say on the door? We could see the imprint of the company we think this thing was. Oh yeah. D.E. Wirtz and Co. Charlotte, Michigan. D.E. Wirtz and Co. No data? I was gonna look that up. <laughs> I, need, I need data. Uh, so this is an F600, cab over custom cab. As you guys know, the custom cab is always the upgraded one that adds, you know, the basic models have like a speedometer, custom cabs get cool things like tax, possibly air conditioning, radios, who knows. We'll have a luxury. I know, right? Yeah. So this was probably a John Deere dealer, uh, like service truck. I think so. I think that's what it was. It clearly does not run. Jake and I did a lot of troubleshooting. We didn't just throw in the towel. Well, it might run. It doesn't start though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did think about just pulling it and dumping the clutch and that might have done it, but you still need a battery in there because they've added an electric fuel pump. Uh, and you know, it's probably a mechanical on the engine and who knows, maybe the engine's hurt. Maybe the mechanical fuel pump died and washed things oh, down. Mechanical fuel pumps uh, looped. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's completely right. out of the equation. Well, hey, at least they did that. Most people just leave it open. <laughs> yeah. So this thing's pretty cool. I'm pumped. Art Deco. Cool windows. We got to find glass for it, of course. I got this super cool old fan thrown in the deal. Uh, my dad collects these, so I figured he could always use another one. Front grill is missing. The uh, Fresh and Air, that's the brand. And of course, the front bearings hurt. You can hear it. But honestly, I bet this thing runs. They just always seem to start up. The old motors don't care. And you can oil these too. They've got a little oiler hole on the front and on the back right there. And we're back. Let's unload this thing and take a good look at it. And uh, after that, we might even be able to see if it'll start over here. Obviously no luck yesterday sitting in their driveway, but maybe with a real battery? I highly doubt it. The ignition switch is actually disassembled. There's no keys. It's all just beat. The extension cord starter switch. I'll show you guys all of that. I don't think we're starting it today, but there's a chance. Here we go. We're gonna slide this thing forward because obviously we didn't have any room to roll it back. And then we're just gonna drop this thing right off the back. We don't know if we're gonna have to pull it off of here or what, but we're gonna get it off. Yeah. All right. 
got my slack pulled up. You break. Now we can take a good look at the cab over. I know you guys are just as excited as I am to see this thing. Uh, what do we got for a VIN here? I think the VIN is C6, because it's a C series. Um, 1DVAG7348. It's gotta be the VIN. GBWR 21K on there. Uh, you can see the DE Wirtz & Co. Charlotte, Michigan. That is a defunct Ford, uh, John Deere dealership, I'm sorry. Of course, uh, that means the livery all checks out and this was one of their old delivery trucks. Really cool. And also, the thing that blows my mind is this vinyl in the back, you can tell it was reflective. So it's very close to the John Deere colors. Oh, this may have came from John Deere or something. Uh, that's interesting. I thought there was gonna be a gap for two strips of vinyl, but when you shine your phone on this, this is reflective and it looks incredible especially the old John Deere mud flaps down there. Um, so we think this is a basically a big block, just like my little Ford truck. It's a 330 or a 391 FE, something like that. They say everything matches up between them. It has a two barrel on it, so you know that's absolutely horrible. We've got a big rock crusher transmission back here, and uh, this should be the parking brake here on the drum. And coming back here to the back, we've got the two-speed rear end. This should be a full floater eaten. And the two-speed, if you look, there's that appears to be the uh, ground wire to it. So I think the two-speed is unhooked, which is unfortunate. And also the thing that I want to get hooked up more than anything. It's always cool to split gears and have fun uh, ripping this thing down the road at 30 mile an hour. These are split rims. They say the most dangerous thing in the world. Um, I don't want to mess with them at all. I'm looking for bolt-on replacements if we decide to go that far into this and actually put it on the street. This, I just have no idea what this is. It's like a remote master cylinder and it sure seems like that's a vacuum line to a booster. Back to some brake lines. This, this may be the rear brakes with their own master cylinder here in the back. What an insane master. But it has hydraulic outputs for a PTO right here. I think that's the PTO. So these all go to a huge pump on the side of the transmission, which really kind of checks out for it being a PTO output. That pump right there with that cable that engages that pump. So that probably is PTO. We'll jump inside here in a second and take a look at that. Oh, here's hydraulic fluid to feed the thing. So that's pretty cool, hydraulic PTO drive. Um, and the rear end axle on this thing, it should be like a, a 558 five, and uh, the low range should be like a 78 or something like that. So you got a high range, low range that should be pretty usable to move any amount of weight that's on the back of this. Just beautiful. The door panels, everything about these old trucks. Unfortunately, the uh, wing window is kind of broken there. It has this hilarious um, parts store cigarette lighter splitter thing in there that's actually cut out but that's just funny to see that it you know something that would be in a 90s eclipse shoved in this old truck this is the hydraulic clutch master and this is the master master and it looks like uh they're all probably hurting we haven't felt any brakes at all yet oh look at that there's pto engage it's that cable running right to the back so we've got a big caution pto control right there in front of the column probably high beam low beam the ridiculous starter switch. It has a foot pump washer fluid uh, set up there. So you, you literally, then you come around front and you'll see it's squirting out washer fluid. Well, it was yesterday. It definitely works. Very cool looking seats, flip down armrests. Also a really cool touch, even if they're not exactly working. Awesome headliner. Oh, coming inside here. Speedo tack. This hack's been replaced, it looks like, with a aftermarket pro tack there. Alternator, oil pressure, coolant temp, fuel gauge, lights, wipers, 
clips, clearance lights, and uh, we got the AC controls right there. Even though it doesn't have AC, it looks like just heat. I don't know what this knob is. That's an interesting knob there, if anyone knows. Uh, it clearly was a Ford knob and it's been replaced. Choke, radio, heater box, and that's it. We've got our floor mounted shifter for the five speed here and our little switch to split some gears. So uh, that should be high range, should be low range. So cool. This has gotta be a fun truck to drive. The next interesting thing is how much room there is from the back seats to the window. There is a huge deck back here where you can put a ton of like luggage, bags, stuff like that. This would be a really useful truck on a road trip. And it sounds like Jared has a tractor running. I'm assuming some John Deere. Uh, I guess we're gonna hook onto this thing with a chain, drag it, and either put it back where we're gonna uh, put it in the field for now until we have time to work on it some more, or try to bump start it because it should, it should start with a battery in it. So I might actually, uh, hook up the jump pack, turn the thing on so we've got the distributor, and then give it a big old bump and it might come to life. So we've got the John Deere PR out here, chained up, and we're gonna turn on our fuel pump, and distributor, should be both. Start, baby, you don't need a starter, don't let me down. Go for it! I guess the real thing that we don't know is if there's any fuel in the tank. Oh yeah, there's fuel. Okay. It's got plenty of fuel. And dad said it was turning over. We didn't think it was, but it must not have a lot of compression because you weren't even bothering to pull it. <laughs> well, the guy said he there. drove it, he drove it home. Can you crank it? We'd have to pull it to crank it. Starter don't work. No starter at all. It, we've connected the starter directly to the jump pack and it didn't even flinch. So it, is the key on? Uh, they, there's no key because uh, the distributor is wired directly is to the it, battery. Is it? Okay, so if you... If we pull it, it should fire. Well, I want to see if it throws a spark right here. That's what we need to do is pull it to... Yeah, give me a pull. This. Pull me slow. Is it... You power, You turn the switch on. Switch is on. It ain't going to fire because I'm holding this. Oh, switch is on. Sorry. Oh, the engine is turning over. Hit it! Make sure that cab don't fall on me. I gotcha. Oh, it's sparking. I got spark. Oh, All right, it. stop! We could hear the spark. Hopefully you guys could on video, but it had a lot of spark. Okay, so now it's just... Uh, Do we have fuel? Why don't you get up in the truck, put the cab down. Yep. And it's, it's completely overwhelmed with fuel, I think. And we'll just pull it fast until it's like this. Yeah. You can see the hydraulic clutch, right? Yeah. Does it move? It's good? Yeah. Okay, go, Jared. Go. Clutch out. See the ghost throttle moving. Clutch! It runs! <laughs> I've got no brakes, but it runs. Hey, can you unhook me so I can drive it? Look at that oil pressure. We got a ton of oil pressure. We're driving it! A huge vacuum leak coming out of the back of the intake makes it really hard to keep it running. It's a 
supposed to go to that back brake booster. It needs carburetor and probably ignition work, but it don't, it's not knocking the engine sounds really good. It does sound healthy. And the oil pressure is like almost pegged out inside and it's working. The tack works too. Yeah, uh, the carburetion and ignition at this point. Yep. Just being cleaned up. Here is this big vacuum leak. Yeah. There's no brakes at all, so I had to kind of let it just coast. I don't know how much fuel you got in it, but it probably needs some clean fuel. I bet it does. The idle circuit's plugged up. The idle jet? Idle circuit, whatever that is. You know, it's the jet or the... You know, it doesn't want to idle. Yeah, you can let it die. I'll get a starter. We'll just... Yeah, she sounds good. We can like swap the starter tomorrow, I assume, and it should be back on speed. Yeah, swap the starter, at least you can start it up. But that, that old uh, Carter AFB needs to be pulled off of there. And, and uh, heck, you can clean one of them, but you can kit it in about 20 minutes, you know. Just pop the top off, take the mud daubers out of the jets. And yeah. I mean, I've found them things when they've set, they're, they're plugged up. All you gotta do is rod them out and put them, you can slap them right back together with original gaskets. And uh, I've, I've recovered them right on the side of the road. I. Uh... I hear Holly Slappers also take 20 minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be a this would be a sniper truck. What are you gonna do with this thing? Well, my thought was we build a huge bed out of all steel, bring it out to here, paint it black, and then build it some ramps, and then put a full poly wood bed on it, and yeah. then you can just put tractors on it, and it would be the most beautiful thing around. Have you noticed the frame is bent from here back? Is the frame bent, or was this because they had something straight. on it? No, 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 no. Yeah. This is supposed to be straight. This this should be a straight shot. Okay. So she's folded up. Oh, I see the fold. Right here, and that's probably because they put something huge and heavy right back here on the tilt. Yeah. Which they've cut off. So they put they put enough weight back here that it bent this thing down. I almost thought it was supposed to have a natural curve for some kind of no, dump bed. No, they, they, they bent it right at the spring hangers. I know all about bending truck frames. <laughs> I won't say anymore. <laughs> Did you see as a hydraulic PTO? Driven right off the side of the trans. Oh. Yeah, these lines come out of this hydraulic box here. Oh. And uh, then it's got a pump right here, a cable drive. Yeah. All right. That you know. probably ran a cylinder up yeah. on top of this thing. Yeah. This was probably, and I wouldn't doubt that this wasn't a rollback. And oh. I'll bet, you, I'll bet you these were the lines to the rollback. And it was a complete hydraulic rollback because this is what you would have used to pick up tractors out in the field. You would have rolled this thing back and tipped it down and brought it up on it. I was just thinking this would make a perfect rollback for watch JR go. It would, but I don't want to pay for a rollback because I, you know, it's 50 grand for a nice one. Yeah, well, the frame's shot. Yeah, it is shot. Look, look, you've got it's, you've it's got, like frost jacked in here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's that's all rust jacking. Oh. It's 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 jacked. It's, see, that's, you don't have a frame right there. Yeah, they cut all that out. No, no, no. The frame's gone. Down here on the bottom. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Because they cut the top and bottom. <laughs> well, also, you're also missing a. Uh, I don't think they had to most cut. of your U-bolt there. Oh yeah, that U-bolt <laughs> gave up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this the best part about this is that. Yeah. Yeah. That engine. Engine transmission, and probably the rear end's good. This this belongs that's a two, to a two-speed electric rear end. Yep, two-speed end. Yeah, we could use that rear end for something. Um, but this, yeah, the frame the frame is no good. Here's where we ended up after a couple minutes of looking at this thing. The frame is completely shot. I thought you know I thought it was rough, and I thought we could fix a lot of it, but there is so much frame damage that we need a complete frame. So if you know where a complete frame is. For an F600 like this, that's dirt cheap. We're talking like what, you know, four or five hundred bucks or something like that, because it's already, you know, a thousand dollars to ship a frame like this. I wouldn't mind getting in this thing and doing a quick frame swap and having some fun. Uh, obviously, I want to play with the two speed rear end, I want to drive it around. But if not, we're going to put a starter in it in the next episode, get it running for real, clean up that car real quick, and back out the door it goes. I'm just as okay with that. I'd also love to have a really cool show truck cab over but it does need a lot of work and a lot of money thrown at it. And the frame, I've been looking for frames already. I knew as soon as I saw it, it was rough. And I was like, well, I can get a frame. 
it turns out you can't find frames on the internet. <laughs> and obviously no one's making uh, replacements. Like I said, if you know where a cheap frame's at, let me know in the comments below. Love to talk to you about that. And if not, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com for cool shirts. Not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. Yeah. <laughs>